Hey guys, what's going on? It's uh, it's Brian again from Brian's Beverage Corner, and today we're bringing you another spotlight on another amazing brewery. We're doing Russian River Brewing today. Uh, so these guys have been recommended to me by a coworker. We were talking about beer one night at work, and he was going on and on about Russian River, and I've never had it before, being from the East Coast, and you can't get them there. So he highly recommended it, told me where to get it or where to find it, and I went out. I found a bunch of them and decided let's do another let's do another let's do another awesome spotlight because apparently because i look these guys up online these guys are crazy popular like when i say decorated i mean like they've won a lot of awards and stuff like that in the past for their beers and this is just something i really wanted to do so to start off we'll do a little bit of history like last time so russian river brewery uh, is currently in santa rosa california with another location in windsor but the company was actually founded by Corbell Champagne Cellars in, in uh, Gurnerville, California in 1997. So these guys go back a long, long time. And basically, this, guy, uh, this gentleman by the name of Gary Heck hired a man named Vinny Salerzo as the brewery's brewmaster and initially the sole employee for the brewery itself when it was owned by Corbell. For the for then six years later, he can, for like for six years he set the bar super high for these like lovely hoppy and Belgian inspired beers, and they became super popular. And then um, I learned this because we're gonna do it later, and I'll talk about it more. Um, Pliny the Elder was one of the first commercially brewed double or imperial ipas in america like so this is so like this beer we're going to try today is going is literally like a staple in beer history and and i looked online they actually have like the bottling date on here so this one was bottled may 12th so this was only bottled like a week or so ago which is crazy this one's super fresh and people will buy this vintage i've seen it online like it's like it's incredible what these guys do in 2003, Corbell decided to get out of the beer business and focus more on, on their champagne business. And for those of you that don't know, like Spain, and if it's not from Champagne, France, it's not champagne. But Corbell was the only exception because they were making it and calling it champagne before that rule came into effect. It's a little fun fact. Go look it up. I swear to God. So basically in 2003, the business got transferred transferred over and all the rights to Russian river brewery went to, went to Vinny and his wife and they've taken over ever since they had investors, they had family and friends like, like help out to like support the business. And they became one of the most recognized breweries in the, like in the, like in the country because they're super popular on the West coast, but any beer connoisseur from what I've been told should know who these people are. And the fact that I didn't know going into this, like, like I'm a little ashamed of myself because the, I've read about their beers. Their stuff looks amazing online, and I'm excited to try it. And in 2014, um, Vinny Silerzo and his wife uh, were able to take full control of the company from the partners and the investors. And then finally in 2018, they opened their new Windsor location in Windsor, California. Now, uh, so with them, you guys can definitely go out and, like, order – you get you can do like pickup orders from them, and so their beers are available, and they're available in most of California. I don't know how far east they go. Like I said, I know they don't go to the East Coast, but let's get into these beers because I'm super excited. Because the the artwork is awesome. There are there is history behind like every bottle or like a theme going on. So let me just put these to the side. So the first one we're gonna try. It's called Defense Estration. It is a 6%. It's a – where is it at? Yeah, 6 .5, sorry, 6.5% volume. And it's, ba it's based on like this – like during the 15th through 17th centuries when um, – it's basically based on the style. And you can see in the photo of when um, – 
revolutionaries would toss unwanted politicians out of a window in a castle. And the Brutus found this amusing when they went out when they went out there to like learn when they went out there for a trip and decided to make like this light humored poking fun kind of joke because you could see that <laughs> there's like a red elephant for the Republicans and a blue donkey for the Democrats and I don't know I I, I see where I see where this is coming from so it's crazy and uh, so this, so this is uh, fermented with Norwegian uh, kevik yeast and bottling and keg conditioned with with uh, Sacramores and Bretomars. So this is like a Brett ale. So on on Beer Advocate, it came up as a three point nine with a pro score of eighty seven, which still puts it at a high tier. The hops in it are uh, Warrior, Brewers Gold, Sterling, Amarillo, and uh, Cecilia. So let's see what this looks like so right away lovely nice color there i like the i like the little bit i like the little head you get on this it's nice it's not too over it's not too much foam there was a good pour a little bubbly which is nice i'm really so ooh, that smells really nice too that smells super fresh i wonder when was this one bottled this is an older bottle, so this one's from 2019. This is from July 2019, so so it's probably so it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. It was in the fridge, so it has been kept cold. It has been kept kept uh, temperature controlled. So let's see. Ooh, that's very nice. I like that. This is. I mean. Yeah, a little weedy, but it's but it's nice. I could taste the hops in it. It's not um, it's not like overbearingly hoppy. Obviously, like the six point five percent, you're not gonna get a lot of um, you're not gonna get like too much bitterness to it. But this is a very well balanced beer, and for sitting on the shelf for like almost a year, that's incredible. So the next beer that we're going to do is called Happy Hops IPA. So also coming in at 6.5%. This one was bottled in March of this year. So 318, 2020. So the cool thing about this is that this was uh, this beer was originally brewed by a place called Grace Brothers Brewery in the 40s. Right, and also in uh, they were located in Santa Rosa. Their brewery went out of business in the '60s, but um, the people at Russian River like wanted to resurrect the happy and this new fun and like a new fun beer to enjoy. It is also it's also a way for the company to pay homage to the Grace family and their brewing pioneer history. Happy Hop is an incredible hoppy IPA with an immense hop aroma and flavor. And it says it's only a mild bitterness online. So we're going to see about that today. All right. So a little bit lighter than the first one. Thought it was gonna be a little hazy to be honest, but let me see. Oh, that smells hoppy. I can smell it. Oh, I can smell it already. So, uh, Beer Advocate gave this a average score of four point one five. The pro score was ninety two. So this, so their all their beers are rated super highly. Like I know the uh, defense station um, got a, like a, like under a four, and like the pro score is an eighty seven. That's still really good. Um. Especially since like there are beers out there that get like low eighties and seventies because it's just not can their beers not consistent. So this does smell super hoppy, but we'll see. Not not as hoppy as I as it as it claims to be. 
the aroma is more potent than like the scent than like the taste. I don't think that um, I don't think the taste is super strong. Maybe it's because I had a Brett style ale um, prior, but this is good. A little bit of citrus going on in here. A little bit, a little bit of hops. I can really, I can like it draws out towards the end. A tad bitter, so that mild bitterness that they're talking about, definitely there. Um, but overall, like I can see why people rate this so highly. Like these beers are kind of expensive, though. I will say, um, for your average person, your average drinker, um, so the. I think the, the defense Estration and the Happy Hops, I think I paid like $7.50 a bottle for the pint bottles, which is still a really good price. Like I was have I was happy to pay those prices. But that's really good. You can see why they wanted to make this. If this if this has anything if this has any recollection of what it was like back when Grace Brothers Brewery was making this. They hit that like that's amazing. They really, they really did pay a good homage uh, to Grace Brothers Brewing because that beer is fantastic, and I can see why it's rated so high. Now the next beer, there's a lot. There's there is a lot to talk about because there is a history behind this beer. Why they named it like this? Um, this beer has been given a lot of awards through the years that they've been making it. So uh, back in the year two thousand. A, fr uh, a friend of the breweries, a uh, Vic uh, Kralget, Kralget, I really hope I'm not butchering that name, who owns the, uh, the bistro in the bistro in Hayward, California, decided to have the first ever double IPA festival. Ten breweries were invited, um, six of which, including Russian River, had to brew something special because they've never had a beer that fell into that category before. No one was making double IPAs or like these heavy or imperial IPAs. So they really had to make something that like knocked it out of the park. So um, so Russian River came up with a – made a double IPA at Blind Pig Brewing Company in 1994. But um, because they were not brewing one, they, didn't, they couldn't brew it at their brewery at the time. Now the store. Now the beer we're in, the beer we're talking about is Pliny the Elder. So this beer has literally have set the bar for other breweries in like across the country for making IPAs, for making double IPAs, and I'm ready to see what the state like like what they have to base this on. Like this is what they base like beers on other like other styles of beer or other uh, uh, double IPAs in the country. From what I'm told. So the story behind this is that there was a man who lived in the first century. His name was Pliny. And according to the, brew, the brewing references, he and his contemporaries either created the botanical name or at least wrote about lupus salistarius or, or known now or hops currently known as humulus lupulus. And that was a very early reference to an important part of any double IPA. Pliny the beer has now become the flagship of, of beers. This is, the, this is their staple. This is their like bread and butter right here. This is what everyone – this is what people drive like insane times to go for. And I cannot wait to see why. Now, this beer comes in super highly rated. On Beer Advocate, it was rated a 4.6, 4.62. The pro score was 100. Now – I've only seen one other beer get a hundred out of any pro scores I've ever seen, and that was and that's Stone I like regular Stone IPA. So I want to see what a hundred what what really classifies as a hundred. Coming in at eight percent with Amarillo Centennial, CTZ, and Simcoe hops, Pliny has won so many awards throughout the years and has literally set the standard for for breweries. So I want to see what the what the so, like I said, so this one was bottled literally like two weeks ago. So this is super fresh. Get a little more in there for this one. So 
Also, like their their bottle their bottle art. I mean, this one's super basic, but it's fan. But like to me, this is fantastic because it because they know that this is so popular that they don't need something flashy. And they have like the comical like defense illustrations, which is which is great. And then obviously like this old school style like I could I can imagine this being a tin sign like in a bar like in an old school dive bar. So I'm excited. To see, so I'm excited to see. I'll put this one on this side. I'm excited to see what 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 Pliny brings to the table. Already like for double IPA, great color. I know it's not going to have a lot of fizz, not going to have a lot of head. So, like, obviously, that little ring on top, that little white ring, is perfect. You're not going to get any better than that. The aroma is not too crazy. I'm not like I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, it's not super crazy, but it just it just smells like a normal beer. Like, I I don't even want to say that I'm getting like a lot of hop aroma or anything like that. Like, I'm, it just smells like beer, and I'm. Oh my god. That's so refreshing. That's amazing. I'm actually in shock right now because most double IPAs right now or most like imperial IPAs have such a thick flavor, have such a thick hoppiness to it or an overbearing amount of hops or – basically a, like an unbalanced amount of something that gives it almost a rough flavor this is perfectly balanced you do get a little bit of hops in the back end but this is this is purely refreshing at eight percent i say this is dangerous because like i could drink this sitting outside i could drink this all day I can see 100% why this is rated 100. Now, do I believe places deserve a score of 100? You know, there's always room for – I always say there's always room for improvement no matter what. But I can see why people rate it this high and why people go out of their way for this. At $8 a bottle, that's so worth it. No matter how you look at it, that's so worth it. I would definitely recommend going online finding out where to buy this stuff in your area for, for my West Coast people, for my East Coast people. If you're that into beer, there are websites you can go on to um, to be able to order or trade beers with people from other areas where maybe you can't get something that they can. Um, I put the link to their website, to the website again in the description for these guys because they just have so much like fun stuff to look at and so much fun stuff to read. And once this quarantine is over, like I definitely have to get myself up there and go check these guys out because this – like talk about like knocking it out of the park like three for three. Like these beers are fantastic. And there's a reason why Russian River is like rated so highly. They put a lot of effort into their, into their product. And um, – And they just consistently just keep doing it, doing it and doing it and doing it and getting it right. And they've been doing this for a long time. They've set the standard for like craft beer places in general. And uh, I looked on their Instagram. I looked on their website. There's no like major events going on. I know some breweries still have like online events and stuff like that. Um, but like these guys, these guys are doing, these guys do a lot. And I would definitely go check them out. I would definitely like, you know, try to find their beer somewhere because like this is something you got to like put some time into and something that like I highly th I highly recommend for anyone, any any person to drink because they make all different types of beer. The place that I went to had a bunch of their stuff. And if I had and I mean, if I I could literally do another whole episode like just on their standard beers, like it's insane, like what these guys can do. But. My rating, my final ratings, I believe at a five, as a brewery, these guys are like a 4.8. These guys are top of the line, definitely worth the money, definitely worth like the time and effort to go find it. Um, 
their products are spot on. I found not, not, not a lot, little to nothing wrong with them. And what I mean by that is like, you know, like some people might think something's overbearing and that's an opinion. That's not a fact. Like I'm not saying a fact that there's an issue with their beers because that Pliny, I believe is pure perfection. In my opinion, double IPA, it, it came out a great color, great smoothness. You know, the ABV was higher than normal um, for a normal beer, but the taste was so balanced, so well put together. You know, you can't, you, you, you know, you can't make that up. You can't just, you can't just do that without effort. Like that's what, that's why these guys, I believe deserve the spotlight. Um, so like I said, link in the description next week, I think we're going back to another rando episode. We're just going to do a couple random beers, see what, what's going on. But I might have to do a second spotlight on these guys because there's just there's just other products at the store that I just couldn't buy at the time. So until next time, I'm Brian from Brian's Beverage Corner from Biked Entertainment. Go out for my California people. Go out to see uh, either location of Russian River, either their Santa Rosa or their Windsor. Both are open. I love you, Pete. Because you are the man, Pete. Remember, Pete is our guy. And um, <laughs> for our East Coast people, if you are, if you do follow the show, if you've been following my show from the beginning, um, definitely check out your options to get beer from the East, from the West Coast, because uh, there are ways to do it. And I believe that uh, I, be- I believe that you should be able to uh, get it shipped out to you. And it might cost a little bit more, but maybe try doing a trade with somebody to make it a little bit easier. But still, definitely look into it. I think it's totally worth it. Until next week, guys, I'll finally be back on my regular schedule on fr- uh, Fridays. This week was a little bit weird because I got I have something uh, tomorrow. I got to help out. I got to help someone move. So thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you all next time.